Hello. Hello. I'm Ethan. I'm Emily. And welcome to our podcast, What the Fuck, about our lovely little yarn shop here in Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, today might be a little bit of a quick one. Welcome sitting weird. Okay. Today might be a little bit of a quick one. Emily was sitting weird, and we should all talk about it. We should all talk about it in the comments below, which one day we will remember to respond to. Yikes. Um, hi, we're here to tell you everything that's going on in our lovely little yarn shop, and the majority of today is going to be catching up with some of our projects, mm -hmm. and then we're going to talk to you about our upcoming new to you knit along that I am actually now really, really excited about because mm -hmm. I figured out what I wanted to do with it today and already showed Emily and the good news is she's had lots of time to process and think through mm -hmm. how we're doing this and she definitely has a clear grasp of the dates because I didn't do it 20 seconds before we started filming. <sighs> if you are enjoying this, we're sorry. And also, no, we're not, but could you do us a favor and subscribe and maybe click that little notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And remember, if you have friends that aren't watching this podcast, whether or not they knit, make sure that they subscribe and start watching because the more of you there are, the more stuff we can do. This is normally the point where we would take a little break, but given that we don't have a huge amount to talk about today, I think we should just power on through. Yeah. So, Emily, what yes. are you working on? I am working on this hat, which is called the Oslo, <laughs> took a minute, Cheers. Oslo Hat Mohair Edition. Yes. So I've got past the brim folding, knitting together part, mm -hmm. and I'm on the knitting for some reason inside out part. Yes. And the totally necessary knitting inside out section. Yeah. And then we'll see what happens from there. I think it goes like this. Yes, it does. Up here. Um, I think. Yeah, we're just going with it. Yeah, I have always found this hat very confusing. Mm. Um, I came, yes. I've always it has this sort of it. section, I guess, where to either pad or lessen the pad of this bit. I'm not sure what it's achieving. But anyway, it has this inside out bit here. Um, which you can't see in any of the photos. So a lot of people are like, what is happening? Yes, because it gets, so it goes in um, this way, actually, so that then this portion that you're knitting inside out becomes yeah. the exterior. So you tuck it inside of itself. Mm -hmm. And honestly, every time that I look at this hat and the way that it's constructed, I can only think of one word. And can mm -hmm. you guess what it is? Um, unnecessary? Convoluted, but yes. Mm -hmm. Also a good word, not yeah. uh, not quite as many points on an SAT score though, so we want to want to aim for maximum It's scores. a bit sad that you do this like massive chunk of, not massive, but a fairly decent chunk of knitting just to kind of fold it inside and yeah. it disappears, but it's okay. We're getting uh, there. We're getting there. And you are using Is It Your Tweed? Yes, this is uh, the raspberry colorway. Which I um, love. Which has some fun little like pink and green mm -hmm. little blippies. So it's a true tweed, which is lovely. Yes. It's 20% mohair, 80% wool? Yes. Yes, because we are having a mohair moment that I think is going to extend for quite a while suddenly. Mm -hmm. And I also realized yesterday or the day before while knitting this, I think this is the first time I've used single ply you know like yeah oh, is that what it's called single yeah stuff. single ply yarn yeah that is super cool it's very grippy i would say yes this particular one because it is non-super wash treated unlike most single ply yarns is going to be quite grippy mm. making it more similar to a shetland single ply suitable for shetland lace or other shetland garments mm -hmm. it does also have a really fantastic effect held double and knit flat with mohair Although for large garments, Isager does not recommend knitting their single ply yarns in the round mm -hmm. due to um, aggressive biasing that can occur. This yarn is also an excellent substitute for Kate Davies Malarkey Tweed because it has a very similar fiber composition and spinning construction. So if you've been hunting around and looking at all of the beautiful Kate Davies patterns, which there's an almost overwhelming number of them, I think mm -hmm. we can agree. Uh, I think that we can all say that one of the big things is finding yarns that substitute well. Mm. And I have found that a lot of the yarns that we would normally substitute with for Kate Davies yarn are a little too thick. It's something I noted while knitting my, uh, oh, sorry, I got distracted <laughs> by a, a beard, um, literally, uh, like a physical beard on a relatively attractive man. It's okay. Um, whoa. Uh, Focus, even focus. Tweet, Kate Davies. yarn, Kate Davies, trite. Uh, while knitting my trite Aspen uh, four ply, I did find that it was a little thicker than I may necessarily have wanted. I'm also kind of nervous to try to put my arms into those sleeves. <laughs> um, yikes. Okay, and what else um, do you have on the yeah. go? Your um, long so suffering tessellated cardigan? Yes, I haven't really touched it to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's um, fair. I 
I do really want it finished. I'm just still struggling a bit with my hands and it's on quite small needles. Yeah. And I was like, mm, let's not push that. Yeah, let's um, not. So I have been working on a sneaky little mo here. I ran into this mm -hmm. because the others cannot keep a secret and told me yeah. all about it. It's all one of our knit nighters' fault because <gasps> that we had How this. How could you blame them? We had this cashmere merino from Hedgehog, <gasps> and no one bought it, and it was taunting me. But I didn't know what I could make with it, and then I realized I could make it. Another. Always the solution. So we, I finished the. Body. I don't have quite enough yarn to make anything. I yeah. know. I'll, I'll make, make a ranunculus. It's been so, happening to me for like five years now, and I just can't. I'm on my first sleeve. I That's finished exciting. the body. Um, and yeah. ranunculus would be a really great thing for when your hands are super tired because it's a nice big needle and yes. light yarn. Yes. So it gives you a little bit of a break. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the main thing. Like I've been knitting this when I'm in the shop mm -hmm. and then I've been knitting that at home. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about my project and then we're going to come back to some other nice light things that you can work on at home or here in the shop because we have a knit along to explain to you which is what we're going to do today because it's starting in a couple weeks and you mm -hmm. might want to start ordering your yarn or if you're coming to the yarn tasting mm -hmm. that's happening this weekend today today as you watch this mm -hmm. uh you might already have some new ideas by the end of this video mm -hmm. so what am i working on um, last Saturday, I realized I was in a bit of a knitting funk. I have finished a lot of stuff recently and haven't been super thrilled with the outcome because of a lot of different reasons. And I kind of wanted an easy win and I had this yarn in my stash to make this. Uh, if you follow along and are a member of the Flock Online, I'm putting up daily videos about this project right now uh, and I'm really enjoying that process and I'm sharing a lot about my top down in the round knitting process and kind of Hopefully some of the illuminating reasons why I'm not doing a lot of that knitting at the moment and why I'm aiming for other things like this windy pullover. But so this is my Calypso pullover by uh, Black Cat Knit Co. Alana Pank. She's the owner of Lupine and a wonderful friend of the shop. And Emily has made one, which I'm staring at right now because it's on a mannequin in front of me. And mm -hmm. I've been staring at it for a little while and I really wanted to make one of these. Mm -hmm. And I kept putting it off and putting it off. And I had said I was going to spend this whole year only knitting flat. And then I realized it's not super helpful when you own a yarn shop and run an online website where most people are knitting in the round and you kind of need to give them help and advice as well. Mm -hmm. So I thought I would rip this one through really quick. Now I have made 17 changes to this mm -hmm. pattern already, not because there was anything wrong with the pattern, but because I have a large male muscular body and the original Calypso, because I luckily had one in the same size that I intended to knit here to try on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, is, was not going to do well for me. So I have, and we can pick up Emily's sample on a different day and show you with us both wearing them. I've completely done the neck differently. If you look at- I was going to say it looks quite different. Yeah. So I changed the neckline to a rib neckline. I made it smaller intentionally and then got stair stepped it bigger, which is a thing I do where I start on a tiny, tiny needle. And then every five rounds, I increase the needle size to make the neckline more relaxed, but stay tight at the top. Mm -hmm. Then I added some additional short rows and my row gauge tends to be a little denser than most people's. And also a couple of times there are some interesting things in the pattern that I wasn't super thrilled about. Uh, the way that the yoke, I'll just be very blunt, the way that the yoke is constructed with the color work places too much stress on some of the increases in my mind. If I was to knit this again, I would heavily modify the yoke chart. I'm so sorry, but I would change. Is this a bit longer on yours? Um, slightly. Mm. ever so slightly so that it'll fit me a little deeper. I think too, mine looks deeper because of how high the contrast is between yeah, it's the there. dark back of neck and the top. So yeah. I'm using Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool in Ghost Ranch, as you can all clearly tell because Ghost Ranch is so consistent. Mm -hmm. And um, Ulysse from Durerum Natura, which is a new yarn line that we're stocking, and Granite. And this all came out of my stash. What? Did what? you um, fudge this color? changing or did no. it just the magic of nope spin? this is just the magic of two skeins of spin cycle that literally perfectly aligned mm. you cannot tell where i have changed colors yeah. and i changed in the front in the middle of a round mm -hmm. and it's completely invisible trust your spin cycle don't edit as much as you think you need to this is one of those things i see people sorry all the time editing their spin cycle and honestly even if you don't love that one section of color unless it's like massively long and you need the color to change so that you can see it again which is why emily tends to edit which makes sense oh, let it, I want pink. <clears throat> yeah i didn't want to throw you under the bus <laughs> like that i was trying to be nice um <clears throat> anyway let the spin cycle play out let the chaos rainbow rule it knows what it's doing 
The other thing that I have on the go, two other things real quick. I am still working on the back of my new draft cardigan shape for a drop shoulder draft cardigan for men. So this is going to be going live onto the flock online as a test knit in the next couple of weeks. It's a plain stockinette drop shoulder uh, with a short saddle involved. Um, so it has a squared off underarm that has an actual underarm section. And then you're gonna work some a couple of short rows and then form the saddle and then knit the saddle all the way up, which is gonna be beautiful. And then you're gonna seam it together and no one's gonna complain. Except for all the people who are like, why isn't this seamless? And we're like, oh no, I don't wanna do this. Exit stage left. And last and not least, um, oh, and that's in Cumbria worsted in the color Eden Valley, which is from the Fiber Co. if you wanna get in amongst that. Last but not least, it has taken me forever that I finally worked out the increase ratio, which it turned out was the easiest one, whoopsies, um, of my new brioche wrap pattern that is gonna be coming. So if you guys are familiar, I like a big faded pattern, a big faded rectangular shawl. And so this is gonna be a big faded rectangular brioche shawl where it's all brioche, one color and two color brioche. And what you're going to do is do this by weight. So this is a recipe pattern, which means that you can use any yarn that you want. And I'm going to do it by weight. So you're using essentially five grams of yarn for each color transition, give or take. And that way you don't have to measure as carefully or count repeats or do all of that stuff. You can just work off of weights, which I hope with brioche will remove one of the problems from your lives, which is tracking what you're doing in brioche because brioche can be really hard to count. So. I thought let's do away with the counting and embrace the idea of using metrics and weights to make things work. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna increase all the way out to the maximum width. I'm probably about a third of the way there right now. And then once it hits that, I'm gonna knit it straight all the way up. And then at the opposite end, I'm going to decrease to make um, a point that goes in the opposite direction. So mm -hmm. both ends are pointed and you've got a middle section. And then I'm gonna make two giant tassels and stick one on each end. And that's hedgehog, is it? This is hedgehog fiber in the colorway Orion, and I'm going to go through Orion, Firefly, Blue Lobster, something and then data. I'm missing a color of the five. Something and then data. It's a color you really like. One of the, sound wave. One of the purples. There we go. Mm. Haha. In full play? In full play. In the hedgehog fiber sock. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait because we're going to be able to make kits for this and put it out to you guys. And also this pattern will be available for free forever on the flock online. And I'm super excited because it took, once I figured out how to do it, it took about 20 minutes to write, which was really exciting. <laughs> it just took a lot of swatching and playing to figure out if my idea of using weight would actually work just as a side note, because I wasn't certain. So with all of that out of the way, mm -hmm. you guys may or may not have noticed that we have started stocking Isidro yarns. Just gonna drag something over. <laughs> oh, no. uh -oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it's okay, mohair hides all sense. Mm -hmm. um, off. Here's something we prepared earlier. So, we have become a, an Isager stockist. <laughs> Ta-da! Oh, ooh, mohair. <laughs> um, and so, I am here holding my giant tray of mohair to come to all of you who may have been following me at many places that I have worked over the years to tell you, as I do literally every single time, that I can be wrong. And so if any of you want to record this moment, as you all so often say, please take your moment now, because if you do it to me in person, I'll yell. So this is the gorgeous tray of mohair. And it turns out that after a lot of experimentation, we have worked out that it's not that I don't love mohair, it's that I only like really, really good mohair. Mm -hmm. And we are lucky that we get to work with some of the best brands in the world. And Isager 100% has delivered on the mohair front and on every other front. Mm -hmm. Nothing we have brought in from them, including this gorgeous stuff that I'm wearing, has not been amazing. Not only that, but it has really opened up my eyes to why some of these top-down knits from certain areas of design have been so beautiful when you look at them online and then so terrible when people knit them in person. It turns out really skilled knitters and not so skilled knitters can get a great result using any substitution. But if we wanna guarantee an easy way to get a really good, beautiful result on some of these patterns that call for mohair held alongside another yarn, that we need to go and get the real stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, we found this out a little bit earlier or other people did when they started ordering knitting for all of that we don't stock. But now that we have a whole giant wall of Istra and we've seen a couple of the projects come out with it, including this windy pullover, 
we can tell you that you can absolutely get a great result on any of these beautiful Danish knits using this incredible yarn. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> we're super excited to bring you the Danish Confection Knit Along, uh, which is going to run from July 17th till August 30th, so you have lots of time. We're gonna have a cast on party on July 17th at our knit night. So if any of you who are watching are knit night regulars and you have been waiting for years to rub my face in the fact that I am going to knit a petite knits pattern, now like also with Marky. is not your time because I'm going to knit another Helga Isidru pattern <laughs> that is literally the exact same as this, just in thicker yarn, so it'll take me less time. <laughs> Super pumped. Mm -hmm. We're gonna curate a list of patterns from a lot of different Danish designers, from Petite Knits, from Lene Holmsesan. So, I'm sorry, I'm trying so hard and I'm so bad at pronouncing the Danish names. Um, fan favorite, Camilla Vad, mm -hmm. and many, well actually not that many others, but I can't remember. So Yes, yes, the two Isagers, the, the, <laughs> Heleni, the Helga and the Marianne. I put their names together and made Helene, and that's not good. <laughs> the Helga and Marianne Isager. So, what are the rules for this knit along? A, you have to knit something from a Danish designer. Mm -hmm. B, you're going to get a second entry. So we're gonna have a prize at the end of this. Mm -hmm. We will tell you about that prize on our next podcast because I know what it's gonna be, but I wanna make sure I got it in my hot little hands before I show you. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing one draw. So there's gonna be a first prize mm -hmm. and possibly some sashes, you never know. Mm -hmm. But there's gonna be a first prize for this knit along. And if you do a Danish pattern, you get one entry into the draw. If you do a Danish pattern in Danish yarn, you get two entries into the draw. If you knit a non-Danish pattern in non-Danish yarn, you get zero entries into the draw. <laughs> if you knit a non-Danish pattern in Danish yarn, you get one entry into the draw. So mm -hmm. essentially, the more things you knit, the more things you do in Danish yarn with Danish patterns, the better this will go for you. Mm -hmm. And possibly, we can't promise anything, but we might have a second super fun and exciting thing to show you as well to help expand these options. And is it garments and accessories? Garments and successories. Cause she cold outside. And also we wanna make sure that everybody watching feels like they can jump in and participate at all price points and all skill and activity levels. If you need help picking the perfect pattern for you, for your Danish confection knit along, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Send us an email, comment below, because we are going to start on a daily basis trying to respond to these comments. We are gonna get better at this, but we have a lot of things to do in a day. Mm -hmm. And we are super happy to help you find the perfect pattern, and you're gonna love it. Knitting with this stuff is knit life changing. That's mm -hmm. the best way I think I have of putting it. Yeah. Um, and we're excited. Yeah, and they have like a massive range of colors. There's a massive yeah. range of bases. So Huge there's range something of colors. for everybody. Right? Yeah. And also, one of the great things to note is you can interchange almost any of the patterns that use Tivini, Spinny, Alpaca One, any of the fingering weight ones can be interchanged with just Tivini if you would like, but we also carry Alpaca, sorry, Alpaca Two, not Alpaca yeah. One. Mm -hmm. We carry the Alpaca Two and the Isager Tweed currently, and we've got some other fun, gorgeous stuff on the way. We also have Isager Sock for those of mm -hmm. you who may want to use something held single to knit one of these patterns, and we can help you work all of that out. We've yeah. got a big order from Isager coming, and I think we might do a second little live when it arrives because it is full of some good stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge array of their mohair on the way to re-top up our mohair stocks because we think you're eating it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's just so easy to knit with. Yeah. And that brings me back to the other thing that we kind of just touched on there with the ranunculus. Look, I'm never gonna like ranunculus and I'm right. <laughs> but For you. here's the painful thing. Mm -hmm. Being right doesn't necessarily always help. And that's kind of an interesting thing to learn as you get older. One of the great things about something like ranunculus is that if you do need, in Emily's case, a quick win mm -hmm. that's not gonna hurt your hands and you need that lighter thing to knit, these sorts of patterns can be really great if you experience a lot of strain on your arms and upper body and other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you can knit them for hours and hours and hours without it tiring you out the way other, I can knit them for hours and hours and hours without it tiring me out. So I've come to really, really enjoy Oh, it's okay. Someone is calling us, but we're yeah. but we're gonna wrap up for all of you anyway, because that's believe it or not, pretty much everything we have to tell you about today. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. We have a busy, busy weekend going on with lots yes. of great anniversary things. And if you're watching this, do keep your eye out for the anniversary special singular mm -hmm. that we're doing this weekend. I think there's still tickets for the movies, but Ooh. not 
mini, if any, fragrance. Yes, brand. and I think brioche is completely sold Plus it will be over. passed by now, yeah. so never mind. But thank you <laughs> to everybody who comes to see us this weekend to help us celebrate yes. our anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's been a wild year mm -hmm. and quite a journey. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we're going to bid you farewell and head out to do some more fun things today. Okay, that's okay. it. Bye. Bye.